Turkey shoots down a Russian warplane. This is Skywatch TV for Wednesday, November 25th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. You've heard by now that Turkish F-16s shot down a Russian Su-24 near the Syrian border early Tuesday. Now, here at Skywatch TV, we're not really set up to be breaking news. You're looking at the writer, the editor, the anchor, the producer, and sometimes the cameraman. So uh, we will try to focus on analysis rather than breaking news, because by the time you see this on Wednesday, uh, we're recording this on Tuesday afternoon, much of the uh, new information may already be out of date. What happened and what happens next? Well, Turkey shot down a Russian plane. Russia claims it, the plane was on the Syrian side of the border. Turkey claims it warned the Russian pilots 10 times in five minutes before opening fire. It's not clear as of this recording whether the pilots survived. Several videos have been released by Syrian rebels. One shows an apparently dead Russian pilot on the ground surrounded by rebels. Another appears to show Syrian rebels shooting at the Russian pilots as they parachute to the ground, which, if true, would be a war crime. Rebels also released a video showing the destruction of a Russian search and rescue helicopter, apparently with a tow anti-tank missile probably supplied by the United States. Again, if true, could be a dangerous escalation of the situation. So I try not to be an alarmist when reporting on things like this. There are plenty of websites out there on the Internet for people who are, shall we say, addicted to their adrenaline rush along with their morning cup of doom. Well, that said, history does show us that most Major military conflicts often don't look like that when they first begin. World War I, for example, was just the assassination of an Austrian nobleman by a lone Serbian gunman. It's always a lone gunman. Um, and then all of the interlocking mutual defense treaties kicked in. And by the time it was over, 17 million people were dead. As of Tuesday noon, U.S. defense spokesmen were still describing this as an incident between Turkey and Russia. But remember that Turkey is a member of NATO. And if Turkey invokes Article 5 of the NATO treaty calling for collective defense, well, here is a map of all of the nations that could be called to arms. Could this incident be Turkey's way of striking back at Russia for disrupting the flow of black market oil from ISIS-controlled oil fields? That's possible. But I doubt it risking a major war over a relatively insubstantial flow of oil, at least compared to the amount of oil in the global market, um, seems a little excessive. But Russia has been targeting the ISIS oil fields and putting the hurt on ISIS. This is their principal source of revenue, reportedly destroying a number of re uh, refineries in northeastern Syria and about a thousand tanker trucks filled with crude headed for buyers in Turkey. The U.S. government, apparently shamed by the success claimed by the Russians in putting this dent in the finance, finances of ISIS, finally gave the U.S. Air Force the green light to strike the ISIS oil trade. Sort of. American pilots were tasked with dropping these leaflets on oil tankers before dropping the bombs. At a press conference earlier this month, a spokesman admitted that uh, we basically gave the drivers of the trucks filled with ISIS oil a 45-minute heads up before actually bombing the trucks. 116 trucks were destroyed. Now, apparently this warning was deemed necessary because our government felt that those drivers probably weren't members of ISIS, which may or may not be true, but even if they weren't, do you really think they didn't know who they were working for? And the fact remains that for some reason, it took 13 months into the bombing campaign by the U.S. Air Force for the government of the United States to decide that the best way to disrupt the flow of money coming into ISIS from the sale of its black market oil was to bomb the oil with a 45-minute warning. Hey, you know, it's the least we can do for old friends of the CIA. Elsewhere, the Islamic State appears to be waking the dragon. In the new edition of the official Islamic State magazine, Dabiq, the IS offered, or claims rather, to have uh, executed a pair of hostages, one man from Norway and another, a Chinese national. 
The Chinese government responds angri- responded angrily to news of the death of Fan Jinghui. And when China gets upset, it doesn't mess around. They've been fighting Islamic groups in the western part of China for decades. Xinjiang province is the home of a sizable Muslim ethnic minority called the Uyghurs. The Uyghurs are of Turkic descent. In fact, they call Xinjiang province East Turkestan. The ethnic Han people are the ones that we would know as Chinese. They dominate politics in Beijing and in Xinjiang province. Well, Beijing reports that the army just concluded a 56-day mission to track down and neutralize a group that they call terrorists, a group of Uyghurs. 28 people reportedly killed in this operation. The government blames those terrorists for a knife attack at a coal mine in Xinjiang province that left possibly as many as 55 people dead. It's hard getting information out of China because they have a great deal of control over the media. Uh, According to reports, the Chinese military tracked the suspects to a cave and then flushed them out with flamethrowers and then shot the suspected terrorists as they fled the cave. Now, China hasn't said yet whether they will join an international coalition in fighting the Islamic State. Chinese policy for decades has been non-intervention. They chart their own course. So joining a coalition would be a major change in Chinese foreign policy. Now, we're speculating here. ISIS has a presence in Africa. Boko Haram, which has been causing problems in Nigeria for years, has renamed itself this year the Islamic State's West African Province, or ISWAP. They've actually killed more people this year than the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq. Now, China has been very active in recent years in building an economic presence in Africa. Might Beijing use this as an excuse to build a military presence there as well? Well, comes word yesterday, according to The Hill, uh, reports on matters at uh, Congress, uh, that China is building its first military base in Africa, in Djibouti. Now, some analysts see this as a challenge to American influence in Africa. You see by this map that uh, U.S. AFRICOM is one of seven regional commands in the U.S. military. Now, and remember that this news follows heightened tensions between the United States and China because the U.S. refuses to acknowledge China's claim of sovereignty over the South China Sea. Things get more and more complex and interesting. In Iran, the Republican Guard has practiced capturing the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Hosted a war game last Friday, exercises where they simulated retaking the Al-Aqsa Mosque from Israeli forces. Thousands of paramilitary troops backed by planes and helicopters practiced with a replica of the mosque built on top of a mountain in Iran. However, in a common mistake, the Iranians built a replica of the Dome of the Rock, the gold-topped mosque on the Temple Mount, not the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which actually has a gray roof. Here in the United States, the national debt spikes by more than half a trillion dollars in three weeks. You see, Congress suspended the debt ceiling a few weeks ago, allowing the federal government to borrow as much money as it wants, and the federal debt suddenly jumped by $578 billion dollars. This is kind of like the rapid expansion of my waistline when I undo that top button after Thanksgiving dinner. You think maybe the U.S. Treasury was holding on to these reports until they could release them legally since they were already above the debt limit? Um, Remember, now, the debt, the official debt reported by the U.S. Treasury is less than a third of the actual number, according to former Comptroller General David Walker. The actual federal debt is now in the neighborhood of $65 trillion, not the $18 trillion that the Treasury admits to. Well, this is Thanksgiving week, of course, and uh, that means a short week here on Skywatch TV. Um, Last night, of course, our broadcast with the co-authors of the new book, The Babylon Code, Troy Anderson and Paul McGuire. If you missed that program, you can see that today on the Skywatch TV channel on Roku. If you have a Roku account, log on, search the channel store for Skywatch TV and add us to your account so we'll be right there on the screen when it pops up. Um, You'll also be able to see it on the Skywatch TV YouTube channel later this week. And there will be a web-only exclusive on the Skywatch TV channels on Roku and YouTube with Paul Paul McGuire and Troy Anderson later this week as well. But because of the short week, uh, we will be 
out of the office tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day and Friday, and um, just taking a moment to say thank you for your support in this, our initial year at Skywatch TV. I personally thankful of course, first and foremost, for the sacrifice that our Savior made on my behalf, knowing from the beginning of time what a bonehead I would be and how rebellious I would be time and time again, and yet chose to sacrifice himself for my behalf and for yours, regardless. I'm thankful that he chose to bring my path across that of my wife, Sharon Gilbert. I'll say again, as I've said before, my father knew what he was (laughs) <laughs> knew what he was about when he told me, son, you married up. I'm thankful for my daughter, who is the other most beautiful and intelligent woman on the planet. We're thankful for the Horn family, Tom and Nita and their family, who have made us feel so welcome here in the Missouri Ozarks and uh, such an important part of this team. And again, we thank you for your support, your prayerful support, your financial support, and those emails that just encourage us and keep us going from day to day. We pray that you have a blessed Thanksgiving weekend and that you have as much to be thankful for as we do. Until Monday, I'm Derek Gilbert. Thanks for watching. Turkey shoots down a Russian warplane. This is Skywatch TV for Wednesday, November 25th, 2015. I'm Derek Gilbert. You've heard by now that Turkish F-16s shot down a Russian Su-24 near the Syrian border early Tuesday. Now, here at Skywatch TV, we're not really set up to be breaking news. It's not clear as of this recording whether the pilots survived. Several videos have been released by Syrian rebels. One shows an apparently dead Russian pilot on the ground, surrounded by rebels. Another appears to show Syrian rebels shooting at the Russian pilots as they parachute to the ground, which, if true, would be a war crime. Rebels also released a video showing the destruction of a Russian search and rescue helicopter, apparently with a tow anti-tank missile, probably supplied by the United States was just the assassination of an Austrian nobleman by a lone Serbian gunman. It's always a lone gunman. Um, And then all of the interlocking mutual defense treaties kicked in. And by the time it was over, 17 million people were dead. As of Tuesday noon, U.S. defense spokesmen were still describing this as an incident between Turkey and Russia. But remember that Turkey is a member of NATO. And if Turkey invokes Article 5 of the NATO treaty calling for collective defense, who's, you're looking at the writer, the editor, the anchor, the producer, and sometimes the cameraman. So uh, we will try to focus on analysis rather than breaking news, because by the time you see this on Wednesday, uh, we're recording this on Tuesday afternoon, much of the uh, new information may already be out of date. What happened and what happens next? Well, Turkey shot down a Russian plane. Russia claims the plane was on the Syrian side of the border. Turkey claims it warned the Russian pilots 10 times in five minutes before opening fire. Dates, again, if true, could be a dangerous escalation of the situation. So I try not to be an alarmist when reporting on things like this. There are plenty of websites out there on the Internet for people who are, shall we say, addicted to their adrenaline rush along with their morning cup of doom. Well, that said, history does show us that Most major military conflicts often don't look like that when they first begin. World War I, for example, 